Welcome back to another Lord Duckman production. This custom Coleman KT196 go-kart is a lot of fun, but on pavement it handles like a drunken garbage truck. The tires fight with each other over their steering, even causing the front tires to plow themselves into the pavement and knocking one right off the rim. No fun. Also, the turning radius is really wide at low speed. Throttling up and lifting the rear wheel with a solid rear axle makes a huge difference, but the front wheels are still fighting with each other. Sometimes they suddenly change which one grips, or sometimes even neither. You can get some very unpredictable snapping of steering, and this does not give the driver any confidence. Whoa. Well, I didn't think this was correctable, especially after all the changes I made to the suspension in previous videos. Back then, I stiffened the rear end and softened the front. This ordinarily makes the front end of a car dig in, or a cart in this case, but it appears the digging doesn't help this strange alignment issue. So one day when looking at the steering rack, it hit me. I see the problem. Do you know what Ackerman steering geometry is? You might, but the designer of this Coleman KT196 go-kart didn't. <laughs> Seriously, did not. And I can fix this. And fix it I will. But this cart wouldn't be fixed up and running as well as it is if it had not been for the HIPAA store. The HIPAA store initially helped David and I with carburetors on our KT196 engines, and right now for the month of March, this very same carburetor is on sale for $9.90. Yeah, what can you get for less than 10 bucks anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Ah, I was right. <laughs> so for less than the price of lunch, you can have a brand new and problem-free HIPAA carburetor for your KT196, Predator 212, or any other Honda GX200 series clone engine. These are very, very common engines, and even my generator uses one. Just remove the old carburetor, install the new one, and in our experience, it started right up even after sitting for months on the very first pull. But that's not all. This month, there's also other carburetors on sale for steel and Poland chainsaws, and even some chains. So please check the HIPAA store website and look up your make and model of lawnmower, chainsaw, or other outdoor power equipment. So please visit the HIPAA store from our affiliate links in the video description and get yourself a carburetor while they're on sale. Because when you support HIPAA, you're also supporting my YouTube channel. And special thanks again goes to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. So please don't forget to linky, likey, comment, and subscribe, and plug the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. And we'll run that intro right after I get the chickens to eat these garbage french fries. Yeah. Thanks everyone for watching. Oh, here comes the boom. Come here, boom. Come here, buddy. There you go. Hey, you guys eat this. <laughs>
and this is why I think handles so horribly in addition to the rear axle being solid so there's just there's like no steering no low speed steering at all you have to romp that throttle to make this thing turn otherwise it just won't and even then it has to be on soft gravel or something it can't be on the street these tires will just it's really bad they dig really bad and they try to pull off the rims I have to actually put a little pressure in them extra pressure in them to keep them round because of the problems that I have with it but uh yeah, so what we're going to do is a little correction here, and we're going to show how this is modified to make it correct. And it involves a little bit of geometry. We actually have to measure from the top of that spindle back to the rear axle. That ball joint on top just happens to be in line with the spindle right here. So we can actually measure just the wheelbase on this. Can't do that in every vehicle because these have no caster. Yeah, you heard that right. There's no caster on the front end of this thing because that arm is completely in line. It's perfectly straight. So that's another improper observance of uh, geometry, steering geometry, and, and making this thing be aligned properly so it goes straight. The caster is very, very important to make this thing drive straight, and, well, it has none. Anyway, we're going to do a little modification here. We're going to show how this is done. So let's take some measurements. All right, our wheelbase on here. It's exactly 60 inches. 60 inches, exactly. I don't know how I managed that, but that's interesting. And again, it would only be wheelbase because the ball joint happens to line up with it. And our ball joint is our pivot point. Well, what we need to do here is draw an imaginary line. It starts from the ball joint and runs all the way back to the center of that rear axle. But because the seat and a whole bunch of other things are in the way, you know, like the engine, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna run those strings straight forwards. It is 60 inches. Alright, we'll loop a couple of strings over this. It might look a little weird, but we're going to show you what we're doing here. Now we're going to pull these strings forward. Alright, I've already tied a knot in this end of the string. Just stretch it right over the top of that spin. Alright, so we're set up just like that. And you say, what are these goofy triangle strings doing over here? Well, here's what it's doing. You can follow this string all the way up. And where it intersects with the ball joint on the tie rod, this is where, on this string, where this bolt is supposed to go. So it's about almost a whole three-quarter of an inch outside of where it needs to be. This actually needs to come in quite a bit. So what I need to do is either pie cut this arm and bend it over and weld it back in, or make an adapter plate that I can bolt on top of this and then put the tie rod in outside of this arm somewhere on the inside here. Same thing goes over on the other side. You'll notice the exact same measurement. That string belongs right about there in a straight line. So yeah, this whole ball joint needs to be moved over. Okay, well now we know what we need to do. What I need to do isn't all that hard. So with those measurements now taken, let's start making a couple pieces, or maybe I'll just cut and weld it, I don't know. <laughs> you know what, let me bolt them on because I don't want to monkey with the geometry of the existing steering knuckles that are there. This way it's uh, not something that I have to chop all apart in the event I make a mistake. So let's see what happens. One hour later. All right, the first thing I want to talk about here is I extended this tie rod in. There's a reason for this. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But this string, you guys remember this from earlier. If I attached it to the ball joint right there and ran it towards the front, I had this angle which pushed it inwards. Well, I made this little piece that intersects with that line. Now, because I ran the string backwards and because the steering rack is ahead of the front axle, this string actually needs to come out the opposite direction, which means that this piece can be mirrored and flipped right over. Now we're intersecting with the string on the opposite angle. Now, if this string went the correct direction, it would go all the way to the back axle, but because there's a seat, there's an engine, there's all kinds of nonsense in the way, I couldn't run the string backwards, so we ran it forwards. But anyway, pull that off we're gonna bolt this sucker down I had to clearance a bolt a little bit so I had to take the head down on one side just a little bit because when I started to push this tie rod in here it wouldn't clear this bolt so that actually makes it fit we got another bolt from back here and I'm a little hard pressed for hardware right now I'm uh, a little short on everything kind of surprises me. I've always had like a ton of nuts and bolts around, but I don't have a whole lot anymore. It looks like... Why don't that go in? There it goes. 
Looks like I've just been using up my nuts and bolts on everything that I have around here and uh, just running out of stuff. Particularly metric, which is a real bummer. The cost of hardware nowadays, if you guys looked at it, whew! The flat side must face that way. Hard to get through them here. There it is. Uh, now, because of the angles of everything here, I actually have to um, raise it up a little bit. What I found is going to work best on here is just a stack of washers. Put that right in there. We got our castle nut. That guy. That goes right down on the bottom. Right. You say in Germany, guten tight. Das ist gut und tight. <laughs> All right. I'm going to set up the one on the other side, and then we'll have a look at our alignment. All right, I haven't actually performed a proper alignment on this yet, but currently the wheels are straight enough. Um, just checking things real quickly, just eyeballing. It looks like it's good, but I want to properly set these so they're straight. I don't know what the toe in spec of these things are. This stuff is not very well documented on the internet. So it's pretty much just guesswork. And that's what we're gonna do here. I just want the wheels straight enough. So let's go ahead and slam our steering wheel to a full left turn. Now the inside wheel, which is this one, should be turned more than the outside wheel. And that appears to be the case. And you can really tell from the tie rods. You see how this one is more of an angle than this one is? Because that wheel is now turned greater. Now that little difference that little difference may be subtle, but that is going to make a huge difference into how this thing steers. Because before, both wheels steered equally, and when I would get into a turn, all four wheels on this vehicle would fight with each other. Because the rear axle is solid, there's no differential in the back. The two wheels in the front are fighting with each other, as well as the ones in the back. So steering was just a suggestion. <laughs> Getting the thing to actually steer, the best way to do it was to get the thing up on three wheels. And because I stiffened up the rear suspension with dad's motorcycle shocks, that made the back end a whole lot tighter, which makes it a little more slippery. And at the same time, I loosened the front end by putting the rear shocks on the front because these are just much more cushy, which caused the outside wheel to compress, which lifts the wheel in the rear on the opposite side. So I get a little three wheel action when you put this this thing into a turn with uh, the throttle on and that solves the solid rear axle problem that's essentially the go-kart thing but these front wheels have absolutely no caster on them which is probably the next thing I need to look at because these wheels the axle or the axle stubs if you will the spindles that stick out of these things need to be behind the ball joints just a little bit now you can actually take one of the a arms and put it a little further back perhaps the top ones move them backwards that'll give us a little bit of an angle that will help but I think what we need to do actually is cut the spindle stubs off of the steering knuckles and move them back about an inch or so. And again, this is just kind of guesswork, but I'm thinking that's about what we need. But let's turn the wheel the other way and see if we get exactly the same response in the other direction. This arm here should have the greater angle than that one. And it did exactly that. We got a greater turn over here, which means that wheel, the inside wheel, is cocked further because this will take a smaller circle as it goes around in the turn, and this will take a greater one. Well, I guess we're ready for a test ride again, man. This thing is gonna is gonna ride differently now that I see that this front uh, front steering geometry makes a whole lot more sense. So let's get this thing started, let it warm up, and we'll take this thing out for a spin. You guys want to come for a spin? Yeah, put our fuel on, <laughs> put our choke on. And this, when I pull start this thing, I can feel that compression. There's so much more than there is on David's engine. When I went to pull start his the other day, it was like nothing. 
This thing actually has a little kickback on it. If you're not careful, it'll get you. That's all you gotta do as far as the choke being gone. <laughs> Just give it a couple of light pulls like that, and then, well, usually that'll get it. It has been sitting cold for a while. Oh, you know what? Duckman didn't turn the run switch on. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! would not do is make a U-turn in this road. I'd have to go way over the edge of the curb and then back around and over the top. And that's just the way it's steered. And that's true in David's go-kart also with the shortened, with the shorter wheelbase on it. Mine is wider, of course, so we'll see. something else it wouldn't do. It would not make it around that corner to come back in the backyard. Oh man, Ackerman geometry made a huge difference on this thing and a proper alignment would probably make it even better. Well thus far out of all the modifications I made to this Coleman KT196 go-kart, correcting the steering geometry and Ackerman angles which it did not observe whatsoever probably is my most favorite modification because this thing, despite having such a long wheelbase, now turns tighter than a stock KT196. That's right, you heard it. 
This go-kart, which is 10 inches longer than a stock KT196, turns tighter than a stock one. Let that sink in. <laughs> Some really big changes. I mean, this, even though it looks subtle, it was massive. Anyways, as always, you guys, like you like, you comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Special thanks to HIPAA, as always, for sponsoring our videos. And thanks again to everybody who's watching that clicked that likey button, that subscribed, and if you shared the videos with your friends or left a comment, I mean, even bigger thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. It's you guys that are the ones that push this YouTube channel up to where it is. And probably sometime soon we'll be seeing 100,000 subscribers. So thank you, everybody, really. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you for watching these videos. And if you're interested in a couple spoilers and you want to see something else of what's going on, or if you'd like to contribute to my projects, check out DougShit.net and look for the... And they're doing their chicken action, trying to make babies. <laughs> if you'd like to contribute, or you're interested in some spoilers, check out DougShit.net and go to the top of the page there and look for my wish list. If you'd like to purchase something to help me get my projects done, that's the place to do it. You'll also see some things in there that I plan on building that I haven't talked about yet. So again, spoilers, there's spoilers, all kinds of spoilers. So if you guys wanna know more about what I'm doing, check it out, I really appreciate it. Anyways, I guess that's it for today, so we'll see you next time. Appreciate that. You know, I think about that two wheel stuff I was doing earlier, and I wonder how long it's gonna be until I, I break a suspension component or, or uh, bend an axle, or blow a tire off the rim, I mean. This thing was not constructed for that, I assure you. Especially not for someone of my weight inside of this doing that. <laughs>